Hello everyone, um, welcome back uh, to Art in the Flash. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, teach you guys how to do a pinch pot. Uh, very similar to what, uh, the methods that the Native Americans would have used a long time ago. So um, what I'm using is uh, called air dry clay. Air dry clay is, uh, you usually get this in a small pack, um, a little package at either uh, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, uh, Michaels, um, it's, it's a pretty uh, cheap little uh, a pack from Crayola, uh, but uh, I'm just using air dry clay. The air dry clay means that you do not need a ceramic kiln to heat it up to make it uh, extremely hard uh, like stone. Um, so when I'm done with uh, working with air dry clay, I just set it on the shelf and I'll let it dry out and then it will sort of harden on its own and then I can uh, draw on it. I can uh, uh, paint on it, I can um, uh, sort of decorate it up. Now it may not be functional, uh, meaning that you won't be able to maybe pour uh, water or uh, put things in it. You could probably uh, store dry stuff, um, but so it's a little different than the, the kind of clay that we use here at our school. Uh, the clay that we use here at our school does have to go through the kiln, which is a, basically an oven, and it's heated to a really, really, really high temperature, which uh, bakes the clay and changes it from this soft, smooshy, uh, pliable. Uh, when it dries out, it becomes crumbly, and then when it goes through the kiln, it turns like stone. And then um, that's how we, uh, uh, and you, if you think about uh, how clay, um, uh, the properties of clay, and you think about your plates and your um, cereal bowls uh, and uh, things that you use at home. Even uh, toilets, believe it or not, is made out of a type of clay uh, that goes through the same process of uh, being pliable. Uh, then it dries out. Then it hits heated through a really high uh, temperature through uh, these big kilns and furnaces. Uh, and then it's uh, hard like uh, stone. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys how to do a pinch pot. So when you open your package of, um, uh, of air dry clay, and, uh, and I'm also going to give a, a recipe if, um, uh, you know, if you and your family would like to um, make something, it's called um, a flour dough clay, uh, and it works really similar to air dry clay. Again, when you finish working with it, you just sort of let it dry out. If you're um, wanting to, uh, if your air dry clay gets really dry, like mine was really dry, I wrapped it with a uh, wet uh, towel. Uh, it wasn't like sloppy wet, as a damp uh, towel. And then I put it in a baggie and uh, left it for, for a day. And now it's nice and uh, this is actually perfect. Uh, so that's, a, that's the fun thing about air dry clay, is you can sort of reuse it. But when you're finished making something, then you can just leave it on a shelf, let it dry, decorate it, and you've got a, a nice uh, work of art. So uh, I'm, I have this uh, rectangular prism <clears throat> form, and I'm trying to, what I need to do is I want to make it into a, a sphere. So how do I, I go from this and make it into a sphere? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and I'm going to start rolling my hands in a circle. And when I do that, uh, it's going to become a ball-like form that we call a sphere. Now, if the, if it's too big, uh, pinch a piece off. So, you know, uh, I only do this if it's comfortable um, rolling it in my hands. If it's too big, I may not be able to. Another uh, trick is, and I'm using a, a piece of linoleum mat. Um, and it, if I flip it over, you can just see it's, uh, it used to be on the floor, but on the back side, uh, it's, it's this nice um, uh, uh, workable surface that allows my clay not to stick to the table. Air dry clay doesn't stick as bad uh, to your table as bad as my, my clay here at our school. So anyway, uh, if it's too big, uh, mine is just on uh, the edge of being too big, I, you can always put it on the mat and roll it. So if I'm going in a circular motion, I'm going to make what we call a sphere. Okay, so now once you have your sphere made, that's pretty close. It's not a perfect sphere, but it is pretty close. Then I'm going to take my thumb. Okay, so I, I've got to uh, take this sphere and how do we make it into a pot? I've got that ugly 
uh, crease that I think I'm going to stick my thumb in it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your thumb and you're going to put it uh, on, on the sphere and I need you to sort of push as deep as you can without going all the way through. And of course when you do this, it's going to be stuck to your thumb. So now the, the neat thing is you're going to take this hand with these fingers and you're going to squeeze a little bit and this hand is going to turn the pot. Okay, so this is as this squeezes, and this is going to turn. So I give it a slight pinch, not hard, and I turn it. Slight pinch, and I turn it. Slight pinch, and I turn it. And what happens is when I do that, the uh, the hole where my thumb is gets larger and larger. And so I keep turning it with this hand, and I keep pinching with this hand until I get this nice bowl-like form. Now, air dry clay, especially the one I am using, I love, uh, I have a lot of crackage. Uh, so it, it, it sort of likes to split. And so I'm just gonna have to take my fingers and thumb and keep rubbing that out. It's nice, uh, the clay's nice and moist. I guess I could have left it in uh, the baggie for another day. But uh, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to thin out the walls of the pinch pot. So again, I'm pinching. Uh, that's why I call it a pinch pot. I'm pinching and I'm turning. And so I keep doing that. And if it's really thick and heavy, then I know I need to keep sort of pinching. Now at a point, I'm going to have to stop because if, if I go too thin, then uh, it's, it's not going to work as well. All right. So now um, I have a pinch pot, but it's very uh, wobbly. And so I'm going to now sort of push down a little bit to help make that bottom very, very flat. And so now since I have all of these little splits uh, and cracks due to the nature of this clay, I'm just going to gently press and, and rub those out. So it's like your finger being an eraser and I'm, I'm going to take me a few minutes, but I'm going to just sort of rub all of those out. have a little bit of uh, cracking and splitting around here on the top that apparently I uh, cannot work that out. Um, so instead of spending all afternoon on trying to smooth that out, I'm just going to have to maybe uh, just go sort of go with that. So what I'll do is I will set this on the shelf and let it dry and then I could use uh, 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 sharpies, I could use uh, markers, I could use pencil, um, I could use uh, watercolors or paint, acrylic paint or temper paint, and then I can paint and add designs to it. So uh, while I, I we aren't going to sit here and, and watch this dry, I want to show you some small balls that I have painted already um, uh, that I have done in, in, um, earlier. This is what I call the Cocapelli flute player and uh, it's a really small bowl uh, and I even painted the bottom and uh, all I did was um, I looked at some of the picture graphs I looked up some Native American symbols and I really really liked the, the flute player so I drew that in the center as my emphasis and then I did a circle around it and then I did a bigger circle and then a bigger circle and then I made some vertical stripes to make the checkerboard and then I, uh, I painted some of the uh, black squares in and then I painted stripes in the others and then I, I just kept doing that all the way around until it met in the center on the bottom. Here is one that I've been working on for a very long time. Uh, it's also a symbol that the Native Americans would have painted on their powder bowls in the southwest. Um, some of the uh, the Hopi, uh, the Membrace Indians, um, the uh, uh, the Akama uh, tribes, uh, that's a pretty common symbol for a deer uh, of, in, the, in the southwest. And so it's very similar to the Coquille flute player where I 
uh, drew painted uh, the image and then I drew uh, a circle and then, uh, and then I drew a line around the rim and then I started adding stripes. I have yet to uh, add anything to the bottom uh, or the sides yet. This is um, a, another bowl that an, a student has made uh, from the past, get that out of the way, uh, and they did a, a quail. And, and they sort of drew the, the quail in, in the center, and then they drew, if I can sort of see there, the, uh, the line, and then they, they did the rim, and they did a zigzag. The more patterns and designs you put on it, uh, the more um, it's going to look like the, the real Native Americans uh, pottery from from long time ago. Now, I got all of my I, uh, ideas of uh, creating and painting pottery. Uh, when I first started teaching, um, I, I had an art teacher to introduce me to uh, Wayne Bates. Wayne Bates is a potter in Murray who uh, creates um, these really, really nice, this is actually a plate, if I, if I have enough room to turn it around, this is actually a plate, not a bowl. Um, but uh, he, he makes this uh, really nice bowls and plates, but the imagery uh, and the patterns and designs is very, very similar to uh, the membrane Indians who live out in the, the Southwest uh, thousands of years ago. Um, and so I just wanted to sort of share this with you. If you do not have air dry clay, like I said, I'm gonna put a, a recipe so that you might make up some at home, uh, but I really, uh, uh, I always like to in incorporate uh, three-dimensional art um, and, and pottery. And so if, if you can, um, hang in there and uh, hopefully we'll get back to school soon, uh, one of these days, and uh, we will do some three-dimensional artwork there. Uh, oh, if you don't have uh, air dry clay, like I said, you can do this on a paper plate. Uh, you might uh, uh, get a paper bowl uh, if you're interested in drawing these really cool uh, and neat designs. So uh, I just hopefully uh, inspire you and hopefully you can um, uh, just be creative and however you can. Thank you everyone.